Timothy Alberino is talking about Giants again. So let's talk about Giants. Get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like and subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments below. Yeah, in this interview uh, with uh, Fallen Angels Under the Andes, well, that's the title, with Blurry Creatures Podcast, he talks about local legends and local gods uh, in South America, and some of them have to do with giants. He also links to this article right here from the Daily Mail, and there's another one from uh, MSN. Stunned archaeologists probe claims of giant skeletons in Nevada caves where they found a 15-inch sandal that had been worn down as well as massive handprints across the walls. Archaeologists have long been baffled by, about claims that a long-lost group of giant humans who stood up to 10 feet tall once lived in the southwestern U.S. Supersized human skulls, 15-inch sandals, and massive handprints have been uncovered in excavations inside a cave in Lovelock, Nevada, over the past century, which have continued to spark the curiosity of scientists and the public. The claims about these giants of Lovelock originated from Native Americans who told stories about a brutal tribe of pale-skinned, red-haired invaders who waged war on the local groups before finally being trapped in a cave and exterminated. Red-haired, pale-skinned giants. That sounds an awful lot like the Kandahar giant story, but that story takes place on the other side of the world, in Afghanistan. And it is a current story. It is a recent story. It just happened a few years ago. And Timothy Alvarino has said, this is a real story. This really happened. He has sources, a source that was there when it went down. Um, and so uh, there could be living specimens of this race that are still around. But some giants have always been around, or at least they've been around for a long time. Here's a collection of newspaper articles talking about this. This is from 1870. At 18 foot tall giant skeletons with iron helmets and nine foot long swords found buried in a mound. That's right, because sometimes these things are buried in mounds. The Smithsonian knows, says, I know it's weird. Why did they decide to hide the giants from us? I don't know, but they sure did. And they're talking about the Cardiff Giant, which is a pretty well-known giant. I guess I could just read this. The Oil City uh, Peninsula Times of Friday is responsible for the following. On Tuesday morning last, while Dr. Wynne Thompson, assisted by Robert Smith, was engaged in making an excavation near the house of the former, about half a mile uh, of West Hickory, preparatory to erecting a derrick, they exhumed an enormous helmet of iron, which was corroded with rust. Uh, digging uh, brought to light a sword, which measured nine feet in length. So these were intelligent beings uh, that had the ability to make helmets and swords. Uh, curiosity incited them to enlarge the hole, and after some little time, they discovered the bones of two enormous feet. Following up on the lead, they had uh, so unexpectedly struck, in a few hours' time, they had unearthed a well-preserved skeleton of an enormous giant belonging to a species of the human family which probably inhabited this and other parts of the world at that time which the Bible speaks, uh, etc. And it, it may well, it may well be those beings. I don't know. Here's another article from the San Antonio Express. Beach giant skull unearthed by WPA workers near Victoria, believed to be largest ever found in the world. Normal head also found. Uh, that Texas had a giant on the beach and the long ago appears probable from the large skull recently unearthed in a mound, again, in Victoria County believed to be the largest human skull ever found in the United States and possibly in the world, twice the size of the skull of a normal man. The fragments were dug up by W. Duffin, archaeologist who is excavating the mound in Victoria County under a WPA project sponsored by the University of Texas. That's my alma mater. Uh, in the same mound and at the same level, a normal-sized skull was found. 
The, the pieces taken from the mound were reconstructed in the WPA laboratory under supervision of physical anthropologists. Uh, yeah, and I guess that's the giant skull right there. That's a pretty big skull. Did he have red hair? Did he have double rows of teeth? Uh, you would think it would mention that if, if, if that was the case. Uh, but that does seem uh, to be the case in some of these beings. Some of them are said to have double rows of teeth and six fingers. Now, some of these cases have been proven to be hoaxes, like the, gi the Cardiff giant, for example. Uh, its creator, George Hole, confessed it was a hoax on December 10th, 1869. But, interestingly, the number and frequency of giant findings, uh, well, it only increased after that. Here is a long list of giant sightings. Check it out. Check it out. Franklin, Tennessee, giant bones, giant skeleton, 1845, uh, another 1846, uh, remarks on some fossil bones recently brought to New Orleans from Tennessee and from Texas by William Carpenter. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just crazy. Look, look, look at all these uh, skeleton of a giant found. There were giants in those days. Reported discovery of a giant skeleton. Cardiff giant undone with an enormous iron helmet. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're all, they have to compare it to the Cardiff giant, whether it was real or not. You know, they always say, oh, it's bigger, bigger than the Cardiff giant or something like that. Uh, yeah, remains of giants found in Arkansas. Human skeletons unearthed eight and ten feet in height, uh, and it goes on. There's yeah, giant skulls with perfect teeth. I'm I'm glad they had perfect teeth. Teeth uh, probably better than my teeth. I don't know. I'm jealous. Uh, wonderful discoveries: a cave of dead Indians, mammoth remains. Uh, it goes on and on and on. There's so many cases, so many giant, ancient American giants, an ancient tablet with possible hieroglyphics. Okay, that sounds interesting. Uh, what is now a profound mystery may in time become uh, the key to unlock still further mysteries that were centuries ago commonplace affairs. I refer to a stone that was found resting against the head of the clay coffin above described. It is irregularly shaped red sandstone weighing about 18 pounds, being strongly impregnated with oxide of iron and bearing upon one side two lines of hieroglyphs. It goes on and on. Here's cases from 1881 to 1890. Uh, prehistoric giant skeleton found. Giant crowned royalty is found. Uh, yeah, uh, giant royalty. Wow. Okay, giants found in the New York, Pennsylvania state line. Monster skulls and bones. Uh, Ohio account of nine foot giants. You, it goes on and on. And we're not even halfway done with the list, guys. We're not even halfway done. Uh, so the, the number of giant bones they were finding were amazing. This is probably my favorite one. Uh, although it, finding pictures of it has become weirdly hard. I don't know why. It's kind of suspicious. It's kind of disappeared off of Google and uh, DuckDuckGo. Uh, I, I could just find this small picture uh, to show you guys. But uh, it's uh, my favorite because it still has flesh on it. Uh, the, yeah, it, it was not all bones. It still has some flesh on it. Uh, yeah, 18 giant skeletons discovered in Wisconsin. Uh, the January 13th, 1870 edition of the Wisconsin Decatur Republican reported two giant well-preserved skeletons of unknown race was discovered in Potosi, Wisconsin by workers. Uh, so yeah, they were finding these giants all over. A lot of them, like this one, went to the Smithsonian where they vanished. Where did they go? Who knows? The Smithsonian said this guy was a hoax made out of gelatin. Now, a gelatin is used in small amounts to fill in small gaps in a fossil. It's not used to create an entire being with flesh on it. That's ridiculous. That's a ridiculous excuse, a ridiculous cover-up. Uh, when, uh, you know, the Smithsonian was asked where these giants went, uh, you know, even ones that they didn't say were hoaxes, uh, they, they just said, eh, we don't know. We lost it. <laughs> they lost all the giants. Well, we've just seen uh, the uh, insane number of giants they were finding. Many of them, which went to the Miss, 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 Smithsonian, I can say it, I can say it, guys, then uh, promptly disappeared. So if there wasn't anything to hide, why would they be hiding it? If there were no giants, 
why not display the, the hoaxes for all to see, right? We can all get a good laugh at this giant hoax, you know, if it was a hoax. That's what they would do. But if it's not a hoax, if they're real giants, they're going to hide it. And that's what they do. And guess what? The Smithsonian is not FOIA-able. <laughs> that's right. That's how they arranged it. Uh, so where are these giant bones? They did, did, did in giant bodies. Did they destroy them all? Because uh, there is evidence they destroyed a good number of them. So is that what happened to all of them? Did they keep some of them? Uh, are some of them in uh, private collectors' hands? Where, where are these guys? I, I hope that some of these guys come out and see the light of day because this is evidence of a huge cover-up of some anomalous phenomenon. I, I, I don't know what else to say. It's, it's hard to see how these things could have arrived uh, independently without any fossil records supporting them. So I'm inclined to think there was some alien manipulation there. Maybe they were creating hybrids or uh, tweaking genes or something uh, like in Nazca uh, and, and, and uh, surely many other places around the world uh, throughout history. But, you know, who knows? Who knows? Uh, some people think it's biblical. You know, I don't know. I have no idea. But the giants were real, barring some hoaxes, and they are gone. Where are they, guys? Where are they? Why would they cover it up if there wasn't anything to cover up? Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. I sure would appreciate it. Smash the like button and the bell to be notified of future videos. You don't want to miss a thing. Join me on social media, Facebook and Twitter links below. Love to see you guys there. If you wanted to support Cosmic Road in an even bigger way, consider grabbing a coffee mug or a t-shirt in the merch store below or by becoming a channel member because channel members are indeed rock stars. And I really appreciate you guys' support. Thank you. Meanwhile, there are plenty of other videos on the channel and I'll see you guys next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road, signing out.